Well, it's about that time. Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Halo. This time, we're playing this. Going all the way back to game one. Um, why don't we turn on a few of these? I've never seen... Not interesting. never seen the anger skull before. I like the idea of Grunt Funeral. Bandana and this are both references to Metal Gear Solid, because the bandana is the item Snake wears to get infinite ammo. And this is obviously the little zoom that people get over their head. Pinata Sputnik. Oh, weird. Interesting. And you know what? Yeah, let's turn on Grump Birthday Party. Why not? Why not? And I'll turn on Famine. Um, so... Halo 1 is a game that I haven't beaten. I haven't beaten three Halo games as of now. Um, I ne actually no, four. Uh, I never beat one or two. Because I didn't have an original Xbox. I originally hadn't beaten Wars, but I now have for the channel, except I didn't. Uh, and I didn't beat 4 or, 5, 4 or 5 because I didn't get an Xbox One. But, you know. So if you're watching this in the playlist, or you recently watched Reach, or you have a good memory, you may notice that this is the ending cutscene of Halo Reach. It looks way shittier. But yeah, Halo 1 takes place about 5 minutes after Halo Reach. I mean, I also notice it's a little quiet. So I think the scale for that ring is a little fucked up. I think we both know the answer to that. We made a blind jump. How did they get here first? The Covenant ships have always been faster. As for tracking us all the way from Reach, at light speed, my maneuvering options were limited. We were running dust. This dumbass yeah. just Until saluting, doing nothing. No one could have missed the hole we tore in subspace. They were waiting for us on the far side of the planet. So, where do we stand? Our fighters are mopping up the last of their recon picket now. Nothing serious. But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS class battle groups. Make it three capital ships per group. And in about 90 seconds, they'll be all over us. Well, that's it then. Bring the ship back up to combat alert alpha. I want everyone at their station. Everyone, These fucking sir? guys. Everyone. And Cortana. Mm -hmm. Let's give our old friend a warm welcome. A literally warm welcome. All right, turn that back down. Sorry, I didn't turn it on early enough. Attention, all combat personnel. Please report to your action station. See, so you have to think of it in a weird way, because this is the second shooter and the third Halo game we've played overall, because we're doing them in order. But when Halo first came out, this was all anyone knew. So the stuff that looks kind of shitty, at some point, this was cutting edge. That said, um, this has been upscaled all to hell because uh, 343's best work is upscaling better games that they didn't make. Oh, good old Sergeant Johnson. I love that man. He's uh he's pretty fantastic. All you greenhorns who wanted to see Covenant up close. This is gonna be your lucky day. Unseal the hushed casket. Sir? It's so edgy. Right. 
Let's thaw him out. Okay. Bringing low level systems online. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. I'm going to boost my microphone again. I've been having issues with my microphone. I used to have it good. He's hot. Blowing the pins in five. All right, let me see if uh, that helps. Yeah, I used to have my microphone set to good, but then I unplugged it and it fucked everything up. But hey, we're playing now. This is me. Sorry for the quick thaw, Master Chief. Things are a little hectic right now. The disorientation for task quick. So yes. This is the game where you play as the Master Chief. That's partially his title, but it's kind of used as his name. But his actual name is John 117. Because as we discussed, all Spartans have an Earth name, you know, like Carter, Cat, and then a number. Vital signs look normal. No freezer burn. Okay, sir, go ahead and climb out of the cryo tube. Yeah, because of how Spartans are made and because of gameplay limitations, uh, Chief is frozen in his armor. Because... There's actually nothing on underneath this. Like, Chief's model is this this suit. Don't worry, I know how to move. So this, this room is really useful because it allows the player to test the limits of their jump crouch and crouch jump and uh through combination of that you can get all the way up here and with just the hit of a button we can go back to this this is how it looked on the original xbox it's uh pretty bad but at the time uh 2001 i believe maybe 2000 it looked great and here is a skull so that's how you find all the skulls but those aren't in the original edition. I think they only showed up in Halo 2. Okay, sir, look at me so we can begin. I know the ordinance tech See, we're just doing a big, obvious tutorial here. Sort of time, Chief. Just look at each you know, get that rifle. Shoot that target. Good. Um, I don't know if... I can't remember if Reach did this. I don't think it did. Yeah, Reach just has the thing where it's like, okay, look up, look down. You good? Okay, cool. People who play on inverted are fucking crazy. I'm ready for the energy shield test now. Please follow me to the energy shield test station. So by now Halo is a really really standard like it, it it is the shooter that shooters are other that other shooters are cut from. But at the time you have to think of the contemporaries and what a shooter was to people. Uh which was Quake, Half-Life, and Doom. And as we've discussed through Reach, um, those games all have a large life bar. Whereas in this, you got a small life bar, but it regenerates. Whereas in Doom and Quake, you got to find medkits. Now this is kind of a weird little halfway house. Because we do have a life bar that you need to find medkits for, but our main uh, ability to take hits is through that shield there. And as, uh, as it is in Reach... Um, and, well, every Halo game. Uh, bullets are for flesh and armor. Lasers and plasma are for shields. So I think if we stick around, we... Uh Oh, I just got to do this one simple thing, and then I'm out of here. So one of the weird things is that because it's so crappy, it's actually a little more obvious where you're supposed to go sometimes. This is something Little V talked about when he streamed it with Wooly. Oh, yeah, and then those drums come in. And yeah, it's really rad how you can just switch it on the fly, one button, free. Like, that's possibly one of the coolest features in any game ever. Especially for a remaster or remake. 
Oh, my cat's really crying, y'all. So yeah, it's like, oh, here's a here's a little thing that you gotta crouch to get through. Anyway, we get to see elites. So one of the weird things about elites in this game is that they're fucking everywhere. They're the first enemy you fight. They're like the default enemy. Which is kind of not how they're treated in other games. Oh, wow. Sorry, I... Can I not melee yet? I tried to hit the button. Um... Yeah, no, it's it's kind of it's almost bizarre how elites are treated here cuz like here they're kind of like a goomba. Well, I guess the grunt is the goomba. You know, essentially just a goblin. And yeah, you can see that those are far more similar to the reach grunts. Cuz with reach they were basing it off of this and they made an upscaled model of that. And when they came to this they were like, "Oh, well, why don't we just use that one?" Because, yeah, Reach has a lot of stuff that's from Halo 1. And, yeah, going back, they look like shit. And, like, here you can see that these guys are red shirts instead of having any consistency in their uniform, which is not how the military works. So, yeah, despite the fact that I'm the Master Chief, no one bothers to give me a gun. Yet, at least. Wow. Like, look at how drab and shitty it is like this. Boom. That's kind of rad. And yeah, because these guys have to work in three dimensions, they have this fucking pit that just goes down here. Kind of spoopy. It doesn't look bad uh, with, the, with, the, with the bad models. Talk to me, baby. Boost the audio. Good Go to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Cortana did her best, but we never really had a chance. A dozen Covenant superior battleships against a single Halcyon class cruiser. With those odds, I'm content with three. Make my four kills. Sleep well. Sorry, I've got a, uh, I've got the washer running. Yeah. So, you did so he's same. afraid. Report. It must have been one of their boarding parties. I'd guess an antimatter charge. Ma'am, fire control for the main cannon is offline. Captain, the cannon was my last offensive option. All right. I'm initiating cold protocol on Eclipse. Two. We're abandoning the auto. That means you too, Cortana. While you do what? Go down with the ship? In a matter of speaking. I like that he has a pipe. It's really stupid, but. With all due respect, sir, this war has enough dead heroes. I appreciate your concern, Cortana, but it's not up to me. Protocol is clear. So yeah, the cold protocol we talked about, I believe at some point, it's where you jump randomly to make sure no one finds you. And if they capture you, you get the fuck out. Upload them to my neural lace, and then sort yourself for a heart transfer. Aye, aye, sir. Which is where you come in, Chief. Get Cortana off. So yeah, it's kind of weird, because at this point, Chief isn't this god of war. But, like, this game is why he's considered a god. Because, like, he's a Spartan, and that demands a certain level of respect. Excellent. And he's one of the only two hyper-lethal vectors. Although, considering... Yeah, I guess... I guess, um, Noble Six is technically still alive. Right now? Yeah, he's still in that firefight. Good luck, Master Chief. But Noble Six should be dead by the end of this mission. Put it in my brain. Hmm. Your architecture isn't much different from the autos. Yeah, we have the same operating system. I don't keep it loaded, so you'll have to find out. See, he's got a gun, but he doesn't keep it loaded. Which, on the one hand, why? We're in a war, man. But on the other hand, that's remarkable gun safety. You know, good job. Yeah, this pistol is, like it often is, one of the best.
So you can see that the uh, the melee is because originally, in old shooters, you have to switch to a melee weapon if you have intention to hit something. Whereas in this game, you have the quick melee. However, it isn't really that quick, but on the other hand, they had no idea how pervasive quick melee was going to be. So, you know. And yeah, again, it's just kind of weird, because normally at this point you would be fighting just grunts, maybe the odd jackal. Nice. Nice. And that's kind of it. Um, in some games you might have like a... In some games you might have like a brute here or something. But in this game you, you fight elites this early and you just mow through them like it's it's kind of weird because considering how much mythology is given to there we go is given to elites in the other games oh that's weird look he's clipped into here but he's not here because the wireframe for the whole thing is different but considering how much mythology is given to the elites where an elite is like the Virgil to a Spartan's Dante. Like, an elite is that bitch. It's that crazy motherfucker that can actually fight a Spartan man to man. Just like a brute is with an ODST. And here we can see that. Yeah, they're they're jacking on to the ship which is kind of rad oh man so I think that this this version of this game you know the crappy one actually launched for a PC oh yeah isn't there a four yeah here it is yeah so in the other games we have visor you know the the night vision thing but in this, it's so early that that doesn't exist. You have a flashlight, like a, just a regular old fucking flashlight that's on your head. weird things that I always like about um, stuff of, of these genres is that whenever you have a change of art style you have to have some big dumb explanation for it. Like it cracks me up. Like this chief looks like shit as we've seen and he's got this big chunky visor. It's like this big blue, uh, this big orange bubble around his head. And that's the only time that uh, a helmet like that shows up. Because in the other games, he has the more recognizable one where it's uh, a little more uniform and it has the, the weird little designs in the front part of it. So many buttons to hit him. Getting confused. So this is, in a lot of people's opinions, one of the easiest Halo games. Because like games of this type were so new that no one knew how to balance them. Like the player has unlimited health. And it takes time for that health to come back, but they have unlimited health. And they really never lose that. 
And what's more, they can still get med kits and uh, overshields and stuff like that to instantly give them more. See, these look like vending machines, but here they're obviously computers. I missed him. Doesn't count. But yeah, that's why I, I, I wasn't sure whether I was going to play this on uh, normal, but I don't really know it that well. Because with, with Reach and ODST, they aren't particularly hard. And I know them pretty well. But this, I haven't beaten it. Um, I haven't even seen the ending for myself. I read it because, like, this game interests me. But you may notice in the other playthroughs, uh, if you don't have a plasma weapon, sometimes you have to just beat on someone's shield for minutes at a time to get the shield to wear off. Whereas in this one, it's pretty dang easy. You just shoot them a couple of times instead of once, and the shield goes off. This game, dude. So everyone's got their favorite Halo game. Um, for some people, it's this, just because of the the simplicity of it and the kind of the beauty of it, honestly, as well. The life pods are launching. We should hurry. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, you can see that uh, this is the ammunition, and that's not obvious. Um, FMJ means full metal jacket. It's uh, a specific type of bullet. Because sometimes uh, a bullet is just lead. Yes, I know. Don't worry. Sometimes a bullet is just lead, whereas a full metal jacket has... Um, Stuff on the outside of it. To make sure that it can pierce through things. Oh, wow. It looks like garbage. But yeah, I think that... Um, oh, yeah, and the flashlight has battery as well. It is so fascinating to go back to... That could have been... Uh, ooh. Uh, ooh. But yeah, it is very fascinating to go back to games like this. Because, like, so much isn't obvious. Like, um... I talk about this a little more in the, uh... Playthrough of... Uh, ODST. But... At this point... The, the balance that I love about this game is not in place. That shows up in Halo 2 and 3. Uh, and like... God, I remember to get health packs because ugh, this is the only game you need them in besides Reach and ODST. It looks like the Covenant wanted to catch you napping. So yeah, we can now see that they've made their way back to here and we've wrapped around to this room. Rip these guys. Like honestly, the 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 way that those characters are in that scene is so silly. Like, just gotta do this one thing, and also I'm two days before retirement. Boat's paid off. My little girl's going to college. Yep, my life's pretty much in order. Oh, I love the grunts. Oh yeah, I don't know if I ever finished this point I was making. But the quick melee is not quick. Like you hit it and you have to spin it back to get it to get it to where you were. And like here you swing and then uh, oh, I'm ready to shoot again. Swing. Okay. 
and you can start shooting as you bring it back up, but that's not a smart way to f that's not a smart way to play. Cuz you'll miss shots because the gun isn't centered, so you're not actually aiming it. Oh man, look at the low distance. Like here you can see the faintest outline of it. And it makes sense, but <laughs> This isn't going well for them. Like the fact that they're on a tertiary defense positions. You think that would tell them something. Attention all personnel. Smoke them if you've got them. So I wanted to mention the uh, fuck up scaling of the halo. So the halo is, because it's a ring, right? The thickness of that ring is supposed to be Earth. And the actual size of Halo is the orbit of Earth. And it looks as though the planet it's next to is a gas giant. And you know, gas giants are pretty big. But, you know, even the largest gas giant in the solar system, our solar system at least, uh, Jupiter, uh, is not bigger than the entire... Hey, we finally have grenades. Huh? Even the biggest gas giant in our solar system is not uh, bigger than the entire orbit of the planet. But yeah, if that if that sinks into how freaking big Halo is. And like it's so limited, but we can see Chief uh, having characterization here. He is doing things. Like, he's saving lives, he's covering people, risking himself to do it. Like, look, he doesn't say anything, but he just puts his hand on that guy's shoulder. That's great, you know? Like, Chief gets such little time to show his character. And, like, I wish he had more, but he has such a strong and identifiable character, you know? So one of the one of the big um, one of the big things about um, sci-fi writing is the big dumb object. This is a uh, this is a, a thing observed. But for those who know what 2001 is, sure you wouldn't rather take a seat. We'll be fine. <laughs> oh, I love Chief. But yeah, um, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Um, has the monolith. You know, it's this huge thing, one meter by four meters by nine meters. Uh, and that's just this big, dumb object. We're coming in too fast. Or uh, uh, in Mass Effect, you have the Citadel and the other Mass Effect relays. And like, they're just this big fucking dumb object in space. And dumb is used sometimes as pejorative, you know, as in like, oh, it's a big, stupid fucking object, you know? But also, it doesn't Chief? speak. It is dumb Chief, in the classical sense. Me? At last. Are you alright? Can you move? So yeah, not many survivors, which is unfortunate. So yeah, they give you they give you a little bit of hope of like, oh good, there'll be friends here. And then they yank it away from you. So you can see that, um, oh, like, this view is so good of, like, okay, I'm standing on a planet. I'm standing... Oh, whoa! Oh, man, it's such a good reveal. To this day. And, like, even back then. Like, look at, it, look at it back then. This looks fucking fantastic. That's so great. Yeah, we can see Covenants uh, going around up there. You'll recognize those from Reach if uh, you're a newbie to the series. But yeah, going in order, this is... The third game? Wow. So yeah, very sophisticated ecosystem. It's Earth-like as well. And the thing is, normally something like this would have really weird gravity. Alert. Covenant dropship inbound. They must be looking for survivors. But the thing is, um, yep, there they go. The big tuning fork. 
Uh, but one of the ways that you can have artificial gravity is by using centrifugal force instead of gravity. So spinning a big ring around, you know? And the idea of big rings in space is usually that. But in this case, the ring actually generates its own gravity in addition to spinning. But the orbit is... I mean, I guess the ring doesn't orbit, it just spins along itself. Jesus Christ, man. So I've commented on this in the past. Actually, no, hold on. Let me finish my, my statement about gravity. Anyway, yes. So gravity would pull us down like it would on Earth. And we might have a little more gravity because we're being pulled down by centrifugal force. But on the other hand... Oh, and they're showing up now. But I think we can ignore them. But on the other hand, um, the gravity from the other side of the ring might play a might play a part in that. I'm not sure though. Um, I think it would just be too far away, and gravity is you know it works relative to distance. Oh. Excuse me, fellas. Now get away. All right. Okay. My next thing is that I wanted to talk about uh, the look of aliens. Shh. I didn't do that right. So one of the one of the things that uh, I love about uh, franchises like this is that sometimes you have a redesign. Like, oh, we just wanted to make the aliens look different, but you know, that means that you've redesigned a species, and the species doesn't look like it's supposed to. Whoops! Warning. I well, then I'll just go this way this time. Oh, wow, like, here it looks like a shitty piece of rock. Or it's all rusted, at least. Yeah, it is made, but it's... Here, it's very clearly, like, this was put here by the precursors. Anyway, so yeah, uh, uh, Ben 10 is a really good example of this. Anyone watch Ben 10? But yeah, in Ben 10, like, uh, art styles would change across seasons. And sometimes it would be very logical, like, oh, the art style is more mature, you know, it's a seinen rather than a shonen. So they make Ben, you know, taller, a little leaner, less cartoony, more realistic, less anime influenced. But when they do that to the aliens, they've now changed a species. Like, uh, back in the day, forearms, the alien forearms, used to be this huge motherfucker. And then in Alien Force, they changed it so he's... Hup. They changed it so he's, uh, lean and mean, like a... And he looks like a gladiator. But the thing is, you've changed this alien species, and in some cases you can argue, oh, it's with age, you know, but how would he get smaller as he aged, especially if his, you know, species is built on their musculature? And, uh, Halo has a few things like that, of like, oh, we didn't like how the grunts looked in the old version, so we changed it. Uh, but that, you've, you've changed a species, it's like, oh, how did this species just evolve differently? In uh, the, the four years between these two games. Oh, uh, uh, shut up. But that's why I like this version of it. Because it's like, yes, this is how it looked, but this was a limitation of the time. This is what is what this is supposed to look like. You know? This is the experience that we wanted people to get from this. And I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm going to play through this mission and the next one. And then I'm going to call it for the episode. I like doing long episodes to start on. Um, I also wanted to comment on, uh, I'm really, really pleased to, oops, sorry, buddy. Welcome to the 40. Welcome to the family, son. So yeah, um, everyone's landing here, but there's little rhyme or reason to it as, as you would have. 
Over here. I like these structures, but they don't actually make any sense. Like, in in the shoot sense, or no, in the work sense, this is meant to be here to give you a cool thing to, you know, platform around and, and have a cool firefight with that you wouldn't get anywhere else. Because, like, normally you have, like, the, the crate mazes that you would have in Half-Life. Or, you know, like, hell in, in Doom. But the thing is, as a building, what this actually is doesn't make sense. I don't know why it's shaped like this, you know? So you may notice that uh, with Famine on, I am still have a, I still have a shitload of ammo for this thing. I've made jokes about how this is the worst gun in the game. I think this is still true. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's jackals here. But they only show up here for some reason. So, yeah, so worst gun in the game... And in this version, bafflingly, it sh holds 60 rounds, and you can hold uh, another 10 clips, which means you have a total of 660 rounds. Now, naturally, that was changed, uh, and they buffed it into 32, which is another great example of that thing I talked about, where it's like, uh, yeah, so the military had these guns, and they, ha they held 60 bullets, but uh, they, uh, they, they just changed that, so they hold 32 now. They're identical in every other way, but um, they do this thing that's it's a little more fair on the aliens, you know? And, like, it's so weird, because... The reason that that was changed was for the game balance of it. But obviously we don't know that. Oh, okay. See, so if you change it as you're going uh, through a checkpoint, it freaks out on you a little bit, but only a little. Oh, wow. Like, look at this. They're just tubes, but now they're over-engineered. Like, why are they so stylish? I'm not complaining, they look cool, but I don't know why they were made like this. Oh no, it'll have as many as three to four grunts and an elite on it. We've only got the god of war and the greatest soldier in this military and 30 of us. Like, look at how different the lighting engine is. Like... Here you can see that I have my flashlight on just a little bit, especially if I move it. But here, I have to be in shadows for it to be obvious. Ooh, was that a zealot over there? Say, so you just open up this fucking, like, lead super cannon and just... Like, look, I start shooting... I'm still shooting. I'm still shooting. And I could do that another 10 times. Because recall that I can hold as many as 600 rounds for this thing. So yeah, you can see why they would want to change it. Like, is this meant to be a fueling station and it shoots fuel up into rockets in space? That fucking truck comes in, hell yeah. Oh, yeah, there's fall damage, right. So kooky sometimes going back here. Oh, don't worry, guys. I picked up another few hundred rounds for this thing. They cornered me. Um, I wanted to comment on... I, uh... I'm very glad to be playing a game that is, uh has a straightforward story because while this game does have a cool mythology and a lot of world building put to it ultimately it is a more simple game because all I've been doing is playing fucking cry of fear and I have beaten cry of fear now but you won't see that ending for a few more days I think and dishonored which is you know has a lot of political intrigue and shit uh the girlfriend just got visage it was just Halloween, so that came out on PS4. So she's been playing Visage. Uh, and that is a game a lot like PT, where nothing in the story is spelled out, and everything is all implicit. So you just need to figure out the fucking story by yourself. Oh, and look, yeah. The plasma grenades are green here. 
And it's like, oh yeah, the Covenant wanted to change their uh, uh, their rounds to purple uh, to make it a little more obvious, you know? Make it a nice bright blue. See, they wanted to make sure... It's playing Splunky. They wanted to make sure that uh, Spartans wouldn't get the uh, Plasma Grenade and the Plasma uh, Pistol confused. So yeah, they changed it. And like, that's why they did it. You know, because... Otherwise, the, the gun that shoots a gre big green ball of energy and the grenade that is a big green ball of energy that you throw look very similar, and sometimes it's not obvious if you need to just strafe out of the way or just run the fuck out of dodge. And, you know, you can see why they would change it. But still, it's silly. So I think Foe Hammer is a reference to Lord of the Rings. I think it's one of the uh, swords in The Hobbit. Look, more lifeboats. They're coming in fast. If those lifeboats make it down, the Covenant are going to be right on top of them. Because you got Orcrist and Glamdring. So I wanted to comment on this. Um, we've talked about this in the past of how Halo... Uh, Halo has a lot bigger, um, like, maps. Um, and a lot of that is because they introduced vehicular combat and vehicle levels. So this map can be a lot bigger, and really it has to be a lot bigger to service this vehicle. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to be driving for 10 minutes. Also, yeah, they get, they get hyped whenever you hit that ramp. Uh, a thing that's really useful is that you can see the uh, the health of your of your buddies, which you can't always do. Uh oh, well, we're going down. Oh wait, fall damage. Yeah, initially I was like, oh whatever, and then I was like, oh yeah, there's a fall damage in this game. Shit. Little uh, little growing pains, you know, going backwards. Bam! Look at this. This cave is not a natural formation. I love how she's like, oh yeah, this place, not a natural formation. Something about this place tells me. Honestly, I might like this one better. It's so smoky and mysterious. See, so yeah, the absolute scale of Halo is, well, implausible, but I guess that's the fiction part of the sci-fi. Because, like, this, let, let's say that Halo is just the size of Earth. You know? Let's imagine that it's that. How could someone build something that big? That should be impossible, right? Right now it is, but no, you don't get it. The Forerunners are so technologically advanced that, oh, they're so advanced. Oh, yeah. So we're going to have to use our car foo here. Shabooms. Well, great. You going to shoot them or? Okay, cool. I feel like jackals get the proper amount of hate. Because, like, with grunts, you hate them, but, like, they're fun, you know. They have the grunt birthday party and grunt funeral where they explode, and, you know, it's fun. They're wacky guys. They got cute little voices. Jackals, jackals are fucking cunts, you know? Like, jackals are just fucking assholes. Hey, you stay here for a sec. I'm going to go... Work my chiefy magic with my 11 clips of 600 rounds each. Yeah, like you can see that they reload a lot slower as well. Because the other games are just click, click, done. Yeah, jackals, jackals get a good amount of hate. They could be hated more, but, you know. Kill all jackals, 2020. So... Yeah, this place... I actually got lost uh, on my first time through here. I was only able to play it at uh, other people's houses or when this came out, so... Yeah, I got lost here and I had to look up a walkthrough, so that was embarrassing. 
And you can see how worthless this fucking gun is, because... Like, empty a whole clip into an elite, nothing happens. And granted, that's a zealot, but... Like, this still doesn't look great, and it's because it's, you know, built off of crappy tech. Oh, man. Oh, it's so bad. The scaling of sci-fi is always uh, very difficult to set. Because as humanity, and humanity is the default, we have these, like, super god, super soldier supers. You know, we have light speed travel. Uh, we have laser cannons. We got all of that kind of stuff. And the enemy is they have plasma weaponry and uh, hoverboards and like hover bikes and shit like that. And so you have to you have to really set up like these. This is that real shit. So like, yeah, humans in the Covenant are technologically advanced, all but these guys got hard light. But yeah, it's it's something where it's like this. Ha it has to be more mind blowing. A lot more crew made it off the autumn, How could you build like the captain really and like Earth help. doesn't have any caverns like this where they're all like made for transporting shit? How could you build a planet that has highways in advance? You know, because the thing about um, let me, let me give it the Death Star as another another example of a big dumb object. Um, but the thing about the Death Star is that even though it's only the size of a moon, it has a population like Earth. Because the Death Star essentially works in three dimensions. Like, um, with Earth, people are only living on the surface of Earth. And we aren't living in the water. So it's just on the land on the surface. Whereas in the Death Star, there's no water, so everyone's living on every available surface and they're living on every layer of it as well. So like people are living inside the Death Star at every single layer of the Death Star. So you have that much more you know, space. And so something the size of Earth that is, you know, accessible at every layer is so much larger than just Earth is. You know, larger than Earth could ever be. Because you can't dig out the middle of Earth to get to the candy shell on the inside. Uh-oh. You know, with Earth, you have to... So this is a little thing. We, we, we split into three and we go look for the other... Or rather, the, uh, the path splits into three and we can go look for the uh, other lifeboats. And hey, they're here. Hey, guys, what's up? And recall that I'm just saying Earth because it's the size of one, what, one four hundredth of Halo? Because remember, Halo wraps around the size of Earth's orbit, so it's what, 365 times the size of Earth? 400 times? Bigger? Smaller? Am I in the ballpark here? Am I getting through about how implausibly ridiculous Halo is? Recall again, Halo is not unique. There are 70 fucking things. And there's other big giant things, like the shield worlds and the Ark. What I'm getting at here is that the Forerunners are fucking ridiculous. And again, it's, it's the issue of having tech scaling. Because, like, Earth is so advanced that there's, you know, all this, all this shit in the future. So the... Oh, wait, hold on. Hello. So you can see that, you know, in the modern Halo, we have, we have it so it scans the shit ahead of you. Whereas in the old days, it's just a squiggle. Actually, why don't we just go? Probably could pick up a dude to, uh... Right along, be the little shootmans, but it it's probably fine. It, oh yeah, boy! Crunch. Is 
this episode is getting a little long, but actually, you know what? Let me. We have to stay with the Marines. Oh, we do. Hold on. Let me check the record. Eh, I'll go for a little longer. Guess we gotta kill all those fools, huh? That's okay. I've been broke. There you go. Yeah, make it look crappy. So I guess we just gotta kill all the motherfuckers, huh? Christ, it'll be easier to do this with my bare hands. Oh wow. Good old key, you are. Oh yeah, so um, as I record this, uh, new shit for Halo Infinite is getting released like every week or so. And it's cool, um, because I haven't been juiced for a Halo game in a while, but then again, they don't make a lot of them. Yeah, we did it, cool. Because like, Halo 4 came out, what, six years ago in 2012? Eight years ago then, right? I think so. No, what would have been after that? Maybe it was six years ago. Um, and Halo 5 came out in like 2017, and that was three years ago. See, these are pretty uncommon games. Um, and like, I wasn't interested in Halo 4. Well, actually, no. Let me, let me talk about that one. I was very interested in Halo 4, but I got Halo 4 and it disappointed me. Which I imagine we'll talk about upon me playing it, because I... We'll have to. Um, and that meant that I didn't even play Halo 5. Uh, one of the things that interested me most about Halo 5 is not anything that was that Halo 5 was supposed to be about. Because Halo 5's story is about uh, Master Chief, like it always is. And... Uh, this other Spartan, this guy named Locke, who is just some rando new poochie Spartan. Yeah, that's so green. Like, they're so more, like, reptilian, like they look like lizardmen. I think it's a good change because they're not special looking at all in the olden days. They're just the reptilian lizard men that control the government and the elites are already that. So who cares? Um, so yeah, so uh, Halo 5, it's about trading story roles between Spartan Locke and Master Chief. And Spartan Locke is just some new rookie. Uh, but I don't even know if you get to customize them like you didn't reach, so who cares? And uh, Master Chief is just same old Master Chief. And there's some shenanigans with Halo story. Echo 419 to Cortana, come in. We read you, Echo 419. We have survivors and need immediate dust off. Roger, Cortana. On my way. I think that's the worst one. So that's good. Alright. Uh-oh. This could be trouble. This definitely could be trouble. Save it. Save it. Come on, save it. Damn it. The lifeboat's total, sir. There are supplies and weapons all over the place, but I can't find any bodies. 
One of the things that was interesting to me about uh, Halo 5 that I hope I'll be able to play on PC if that comes out on PC, which I don't know if it is, uh, there was this thing called Spartan Ops. Um, the game modes of Halo are the story where you play as uh, Master Chief and fight aliens. And then uh, the online death matches where you play as miscellaneous Spartans and shoot each other. Uh, and then in ODST and then Reach, they added Firefight, where uh, you play as that same miscellaneous Spartan and shoot randos. Have we come all the way back here, or is this a different area? Oh boy. I think this is a different area. Are they going to help out? Um, anyway, so, uh, Halo 5 added this thing called Spartan Ops, which really interested me, but I never played it, where you play as, you know, that, that same old Spartan that you would in Firefight or Multiplayer, uh, except now you do it in a campaign. So it's a, it's a weird combination of Firefight and, uh, campaign, and that's what Spartan Ops is. Uh, I really like that, though. I love the idea of more campaigns in something. Uh, I think they were released episodically. Um, I don't know if they all had a complete story. Like, you would have to play part one to understand what the hell you were doing in part two. Um, I think they might have, but I'm not sure. Oh, I think they got everyone. Why don't we just look around here and see if there's any goodies. Oh, we got red dots. See, so yeah, that interests me. I would love to play that. That might, um, that might have to be its own LP, though, because... Things that are released episodically can often end up taking way, way longer. Nice. Hold still. I got him. You all saw that? I got him. Oh, wow. It looks like crap. Every, every time, it's just kind of a shock to my senses. I've just... <laughs> Echo 419 to Cortana. Four hammers on station and ready for another pickup. Affirmative, Four Hammer. We're ready for dust off. Approach when ready. Cool. We're going to look for the last lifeboat, Echo 419. Good luck. Radical. Let's get the hell out of here. Um... See, I would love to do Spartan Ops. However, I think Spartan Ops is also uh, multiplayer. Um, something I would really like to do. I want to... Uh, oops, excuse me, everyone. Excuse me, Fohammer. I would love to cultivate a, a, a unit, a, a team, a fire team, perhaps, of people that I can record with. Because um, like, I would love to record more with Kate, but she's often busy or sleeping or something because we have different oh, schedules. Uh, I don't know if I could record with Robert, but maybe. My friend Robert, who I've mentioned, is my best friend. Um, and I have recorded with Sarah here and there, but she doesn't have her own PC. Just a uh, little Mac. Uh, which are fine, but... Oh, fuck. I was hoping to splatter him with the, with the car, but... Uh, someone shot him, and then he died, and his timer went off. Just as I was in the kill zone. Alright, everyone out. I guess. This is what's happening. Yeah, I would love to have a team of four that I can just be like, hey. Everyone want to play some fucking video games. And then th those going to be the guys that I play uh, Left 4 Dead or Spartan Ops and shit with. That's that's about what I want, you know? Hey, y'all. Oh, that's a, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I didn't think that would be a pit in there. Well, Here comes more. 
Boom. Do it. Yeah. Howard. Maybe they took cover in that structure. Let's check it out. You know, I don't think this structure is a natural formation, y'all. Master of understate. Oh, that was perfect. Hyper lethal vector. There's always um. Sometimes I I always uh. What am I trying to say here? Whenever you have a character in a video game who is uh, more advanced or experienced than his contemporaries. Sometimes there's actually no reason for him to be that way. And so it's up to the writers to give them a reason. So in this, you know, Chief is the hyper lethal vector. He's just trained more. And he's also got luck. What the fuck happened? Shit, man. How about, actually, I pause the recording here. Um, I've been Alfred. This has been Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, I'm very glad to be playing a Halo game. So I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.